And it wasn't just his inspiration that King found in the King James Bible. He also found he struggled to convince white Americans that their black neighbors were not aggressors, but just ordinary people like them. It was rooted in the sayings of a much earlier idealist from the Bible, Jesus. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. To care for orphans and destitute women, to the setting up of mutual associations and cooperatives to help the, to the Christian socialists and gospel Christians with books. This book, apart from its effect on language and democracy and of course its spread of faith, has prompted enormous acts of philanthropy. It's been used by the unprincipled in brutal and unholy ways. It's opened the portals to education for many and also often slammed shut the doors of advancement for the poor. It's liberated great tranches of people. It's wheat as well as chaff in it, good as well as... ...and workings of the universe. So it's surprising that the man credited with jump-starting modern observational science in this country, Francis Bacon, wrote in the early 17th century that there were two ways in which to discover the truth of life. One was the book of nature, but the other was the book of scriptures. And just as the scriptures in the 1650s, experiments here in these gardens including building a glass beehive and constructing various chronological devices I would argue that this link between religion and science would continue centricity and unorthodoxy of modern observational science to gain a foothold Religion was the enabler and the protector of science in this country in its first century and beyond. Most of those scientists were unarguably religious, like Isaac Newton, who came into the society in the 1660s. In the 18th century, there was the dissenting Protestant, Joseph Priestley, who made groundbreaking experiments in chemistry and electricity. In the 19th century, Faraday, with Fieldstunt. In this, as yet unseen, particle. Signs of some of the greatest physicists alive. So far, no particle. But why does it matter so much? In my view, Newton made it matter. His Christian God is that. Nothing, we are told, by poets and physicists alike can come of nothing. And we're told by someone as eminent as Lord Martin Rees, former president of the Royal Society and astronomer royal, that there are things we shall never know. It's certainly on the cards, in my view, that there are aspects of reality and some scientific problems to which we may never find the answer, simply because our brains aren't up to it. Just as a monk have brains that are matched to the level needed to understand all aspects of reality. To come back to the King James Bible, just 1611, it was very soon after that that Bacon started to explore the ideas mm -hmm. which the Royal Society took up. Can you see any connection between the idea of a faith? Do you think that was a sustaining idea for scientists? I believe it was genuinely a motivation for them in trying to understand nature and nature's laws. If you thought that the universe was completely ran by the clockwork of the heavens, uh, the idea that the uh, planets followed their courses because of some universal law, he thought that was a manifestation of the divine imprint of those laws. Newton, a man steeped in religion and the King James Bible, set that agenda. Protestant Christianity is one of many religions. Like others in that the Anglican Church used to pride itself on occupying. 
tolerant, a broad church, an easy fit. I remember coming to this church, St. Mary's Wickton, to see the assembled forces and battles. And then the years of singing, listening, and the war games before and after choir practice, when the church became a battleground, with hassocks as hand grenades, and the gallery up there, a fortress. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For, behold, the darkness shall cover them. Like millions of others in this country, I was getting a rich, largely unconscious education in music and from the words of the King James Bible, which was also read out at daily assembly in school, in language and against, some would dare to say, beyond reason. Seeded it. That's why I wanted these three windows to be put in this church. I wanted to portray the people of this small Cumbrian town of centuries because of the King James Bible. Their ancestors were educated by it. Some of them killed in wars blessed by it. Others living lives of torment because of the way its morality was brutalized. Others consoled and inspired. The whole concept, God, Genesis, Christ's resurrection, is to me a very moving. When at the end of his life, he described his work as a cupboard before me. He defeated the giant Goliath and united the tribes of Israel, but how reliable is the Bible's account of King David? 